wow, y'all look beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Kirk, uh, my best friend, the love of my life, and with your help, the next First Lady of South Carolina. <laughs> And thank you, thank you very much to uh, my dear friend, Representative Mandy Powers Norell, a strong and courageous leader in South Carolina. And thank you, thank you for your service to the people of this state. Thank you. <laughs> to our mayor and my dear friend Steve, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for all you are doing for Columbia and the example of leadership you're giving the nation as the president-elect of the U.S. Conference of Mayors. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. And thank you to our Governor Jim Hodges. Governor, thank you so much for being a friend to me when I was a, a new baby House member. You gave me such guidance and encouragement. Uh, serving in the House together, but you were a governor who moved South Carolina forward. Thank you so much. <laughs> to all of you, my friends, my fellow South Carolinians, thank you all for being here. You all are a beautiful sight for South Carolina. Look, as I stand here this evening, I know I am truly a blessed man. I have a wife who is my best friend and partner in life since we were teenagers. And our four children, Emerson, Thomas, Paul, and Shannon, who remind me every day of the joy in life. And any mission I have ever undertaken has never been my mission alone, but my family's mission. And I have a band of brothers and Team Swap Fox and Team Viper whose devotion to duty and heroism still leaves me in awe, and whose examples of service I aspire to every day. And I'm so, so very thankful to my brothers and sisters in the legislature who have long had my back. Yes, I am a blessed man, and I'm I'm very humbled to be before this amazing crowd tonight. I know that you did not come here just to see me. But what brought you here is the same thing that brought me here. A belief in an even better South Carolina. A knowledge and love of South Carolina and her people. The knowledge that South Carolina's best days can be ahead of us. Woo. You know it. You say it. My family's roots go deep in South Carolina. My parents who are here with me tonight, Jim and Nina Smith, please sit, thank you. Thank you. My parents passed to me enduring values of service to community, state, and nation. My strong, courageous, wonderful mom, Nina Smith, set the example for me. She rose to the top of her profession as a lawyer, leading a team of lawyers. And she has always been committed to serving our community. She led the redevelopment of our airport and has served on numerous foundation boards, always working to leave wherever she was better than she found it. And I can trace military service through every generation of my family to the Revolutionary War. Their service is a legacy of commitment to serving others before self, where words like duty, service, and leadership are not a slogan, but a way of life. One of the memories I have as a young boy was watching my father, Jim Smith, and my uncles, and my grandfather when they got together at family gatherings. All of them had served in the military. And I could tell there was something special about what they had been through, that they lived for something bigger than themselves. And even then, as a child, I understood that they had done something special for all of us. And I wanted to be a part of that. I know that many of you are aware of the story of my resigning from the JAG Corps and enlisting into the infantry. 
But that action is, is not important. What is important is why. My family was on an already planned holiday trip to New York City. It was early November after 9-11. And on a visit to Ground Zero, I witnessed the recovery efforts firsthand. Standing there, it was not possible to comprehend the vast and horrifying extent of the death and destruction. I have no words, no words to describe the sight, the sounds, and the smells of that day. But I recall a moment when all of the recovery activity came to a halt, where everyone stopped what they were doing upon the discovery of the remains of one of our fellow countrymen. Everyone paused in silence as workers covered the remains with an American flag and took them from the site. I knew in that moment I wanted to be a part of our nation's response. I felt the call to serve in a different way, and I wasn't alone. I was just one of so many throughout our nation who have answered the call to serve. And while in Afghanistan to support Operation Enduring Freedom, it was the greatest honor and absolute privilege of my life to lead American soldiers in combat. You know, we were from different areas, different races, different life experiences. But in that moment, we all came together in a common purpose for a common mission. I was truly fortunate to serve with the very best our state and nation has to offer, alongside real heroes, soldiers who represent the best of what America stands for. And I came home a different man, with a deeper faith and more thankful for my family. And I cared more about getting it right, whatever the political consequences. More than ever, I was determined to see South Carolina succeed. And I knew that we had to build bipartisan coalitions working together to put the people of South Carolina first. <laughs> With the help of my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, I've been able to get major legislation passed, and I know how to get things done for South Carolina. Yeah. We've done it, and we can do it again. And as I stand here in the heart of District 72 and look out ahead at my last year of service in the House, I am so grateful to you all for your support. I know that whatever successes I have had, they were not mine, but it was the effort of those outside the chamber who stood with me, who stood with me for South Carolina. That made the difference. But you, you and I are not done yet, right? <laughs> There is more to do, much more to do. And that is why I stand here with you tonight to announce my candidacy for governor of the great state of South Carolina. Let's do this. Let's do this. tell you, I know you feel as I do. I, I see South Carolina as she can be. I see South Carolina as she can be, and I ask, why not? Why not an economy that works for all of us? Yeah. Why not more than a minimally adequate education? Why not access to health care for everyone? Yeah. And why not a South Carolina where everyone's constitutional rights are protected? out a real energy plan that protects ratepayers. <laughs> and why not a government that is transparent, accountable, and that serves the people of South Carolina first and always? <laughs> well,
Well, we know why. Because we've had leaders serving themselves and not South Carolina. We've had leaders making decisions for their own political future and not our future. And we have a culture of corruption. Yes, we do. A culture of corruption that is holding South Carolina back. I've heard it. I've heard it from so many South Carolinians and from so many of you. We are fed up with lobbyists and special interests controlling our government. And we reject the divisive politics that separate us instead of bringing us together to solve problems. And we are disgusted with the politics of the State House, and we deserve better. Yeah. You know this. Our, our people, our people are better than our politics. In our neighborhoods, our churches, our communities, we see examples every day of people putting service to others before themselves. But in our state government, all too often our elected leaders are putting themselves first. Like you, I see the potential in our state. I know what we can do together. I know what we can be. We have to do what's right for the people of South Carolina. We can. We can create an, econ an economy that works for all of us. Yeah. Too many families are getting left behind. Too many hardworking South Carolinians are finding it harder and harder to make ends meet. We can change this for the better. There are well-paying jobs available today that would strengthen and grow our state, providing economic opportunity. It's connecting those jobs with hardworking people who need them. And that should be a high priority for the next governor, right? <laughs> South Carolina can and must do better in preparing our workforce for the jobs that are here today and the jobs for the future. We know what to do. We know how to do it. We need leaders with the political will to get it done. And we can. We can create a health care system that serves all. Right? And we know this. It's, there are hundreds of thousands of South Carolinians who don't have health care simply because of their zip code, simply because they're South Carolinians. We can have. We can have a South Carolina plan for health care that covers hundreds of thousands of South Carolinians today. We can do it right now and do it without raising a cent in taxes. We can change this, and I will as your governor. Yeah. We know that our children can have and deserve more than a minimally adequate education. We know that. But even as low and uninspiring a standard as that is, our Supreme Court has held that your government is failing to meet that constitutional obligation to provide even a minimally adequate education. We can change this. We can do it. And we must. Right? And we know what to do, and we know works, what works, and how to reach equitable funding across our state. We have the plans now. We can get it done. And it's not just about the money, but it's also about education reforms, modernization, and innovation. We need to reform and modernize our public system that elevates the status, role, and importance of teachers. We have plans to make an education a team effort among groups of teachers over several years, a system that delivers resources to the classroom and reduces administrative costs. We can do this. We know 
we know that in South Carolina we are all God's children. And that our state can be a place where the rights and dignity of every human being is respected. And we should expect no less. And while South Carolina is home to amazingly smart and talented women, our state's prosperity and progress are stunted by gender inequality. South Carolina was recently ranked 47th in the nation in terms of women's equality. That does not reflect our values as South Carolinians. We can change this and we must. We must insist on equal pay for equal work. And much more to do. And you know, we can. We can create an energy plan that serves the people and not special interests. Yeah. The VC summer plant failure makes it clear for the need for change in South Carolina. Yeah. More than $9 billion lost, right? 5,600 jobs lost, and the power company executives make millions in pay and bonuses, yeah. sticking South Carolina ratepayers with the bill. We can and we must change this for the better. We, we can do this by passing the South Carolina Ratepayer Protection Act, that among many reforms, it will, it will re repeal the Baseload Review Act. We need to get rid of that thing. That's been causing problems. It will establish a Ratepayer Bill of Rights and require transparency on rates so you know what you're paying for. We are, we're going to provide accountability that ORS, ORS will protect ratepayers and keep our rates competitive. And we need to elevate the energy office to ensure South Carolina's energy needs are a priority in our energy planning. <laughs> and finally, we must eliminate power company political contributions to those responsible for their regulation. Other states do it, we should do it here. Yeah. Friends, we, we deserve better. We need leaders we can be proud of. We need leaders who no longer accept being at the bottom of every list we want to be on the top of and being at the top of every list we want to be on the bottom of. I hear it. I hear it from Republicans. I hear it from Democrats and Independents. And we all share a common frustration. We're all sick and tired of it. No matter where we find ourselves on the political spectrum, it is right to expect that our government work for us. I'm reminded of a quote by our 35th president, John F. Kennedy, who said, let us not seek the Republican answer or the Democratic answer, but the right answer. Let us seek Let us not seek to fix the blame for the past. Let us accept our own responsibility for the future. That's what we need to do. He was right then and it's right now. Ladies and gentlemen, we need a governor who will serve all the people of the state. A governor that can unify our state. We need a governor who will care more about doing the job than keeping the job. And friends, I am ready to be that governor.
but I cannot do it alone, right? <laughs> nothing, nothing this hard can be done alone. I know, I say amen, that's right. You got it. Thank you, Carol. Just, just talk to any of my fellow soldiers from Swamp Fox that are here this evening. You know, we never went into, into battle alone. We always went as a team. And friends, that's how we must do this and go into this campaign as a team, together. Together we will prove what I've told my children for years, that the most important job in our democracy belongs to the citizen. The most important job in this election belongs to you. And it won't be easy. Change never is. But you know, as well as I do, if we keep putting the same people in power, we'll keep getting the same results. So we know, we know this is going to be hard. So every day, between now and November 2018, we must remember that this election for governor of South Carolina is about our future. It's up to us to decide that future. So this campaign, this campaign is your campaign. It's up to each of you to take ownership of this effort to improve South Carolina. It's not up to someone else. It's up to all of us. So join me. So get your family on board, get your friends on board, get your neighborhood on board, get your workers on board. And you've done it tonight as I can see here. This is a campaign for South Carolina by South Carolinians who believe and want a better South Carolina for all. Yeah. My family and I have made this campaign our family mission, and we st will stand with each of you at each step every day. And so it all starts here. It all starts tonight. It's up to us. Elect me as your next governor, and I will hold those leaders accountable. Elect me as your next governor, and we will move South Carolina forward in jobs, in health care, in education, in ethics, and in energy, elect me as your next governor and I will be accountable to the citizens of South Carolina. I will be accountable to you. God bless you all. God bless South Carolina. Now let's go do this.